All right, welcome back to College Football Addiction. Here chatting with Manny Navarro of The Athletic, The Wide Right Pod. We appreciate you, Manny, for jumping on. Appreciate BetUS for their support on this video. Manny, how you doing? Doing good, man. Coming off a uh, bye week with Miami, so I got to uh, just watch everybody else play over the weekend. It was another exciting week of college football, man. Some really great games. Yeah, last week was phenomenal. We, we may get another really good one. Texas, Georgia, obviously, if you think about some of the big ones that are happening in the SEC, and then a really big ACC matchup, too, with Louisville and Miami, which we'll talk about. Um, before we jump super deep into that game, Miami's maybe struggled a little bit the last couple of times they've been out. Virginia Tech and Cal, games that they were decent favorites in and, and had to really come back from trailing pretty big late, um, which credits to them for, for doing that. But what do you think the reason for that struggle is? Is that like a... Is there a coaching thing? Is it playing down to competition? Like, what, what's the issue there? I think part of it is just, you know, your first four games, you were definitely expected to pound those teams. You're much better than those teams were on paper. Uh, I think the last couple of games, when you get into conference play and, and you have a step up in, in competition, you get some guys uh, that aren't used to being in lead roles, you know, maybe take things for granted a little bit more, right? I mean, Miami's been without Jalen Rivers essentially since the Florida game, since the opener. Uh, and without Ruben Bain, uh, who's been their best defensive player up until the Cal game, he played three plays against Florida. So you had a bunch of other guys that had to step up into the starting left tackle role, into the starting uh, edge rusher role. And uh, and I think what happened was you just saw the team sort of have a letdown maybe in, in, in some of those games. And and look, going into the season, I was very suspect of Miami secondary after losing Cam Kitchens and James Williams. I thought safety would be an issue. Uh, and I think in those two games, Virginia Tech, and Cal, you saw some blown coverages. You saw some mistakes in the, in the defensive backfield. And you saw Miami play a much tighter game because of that. So where are they now health-wise coming out of the bye? Some of those injuries you mentioned, some of those guys coming back. Where are they and what are your – do you have any more injury concerns about Miami right now? Yeah, well, Jalen Rivers is going to come back. He's going to start against Louisville at left tackle, which is huge news because Markel Bell, as talented as he is – uh, was was getting beat uh, every now and then by some of the some of the pressure he was facing. He's a JUCO guy that the coaching staff was super excited about when they got him, but you had to play him right off the bat early in his career, and you know that sometimes that's that's a mistake with offensive linemen. You can you can get beat uh, with those guys out there if they're not ready. And so while Markel Bell I think did a fine job, it's definitely a much different Miami offensive line with a healthy Jalen Rivers, who I think is arguably the best offensive lineman in the ACC. So. Uh, him coming back should help Cam Ward. He's felt some pressure. Some of it is self-inflicted because he's holding on to the ball too long. But certainly teams have been able to get pressure on him more uh, as, as the season has progressed. So that's going to help. And then Ruben Bain, you know, he came back, played in the Cal game, had a couple big plays. Uh, you felt his presence. Uh, but having him sort of come off a of bye week now after playing in a game, you're going to start to see the Ruben Bain we saw last year when he was the ACC Defensive Freshman of the Year. So I think both of those guys should help Miami at the line of scrimmage, and that's important because Louisville's good on the line of scrimmage. For all of the – I was watching a show yesterday, and and it was talking about, you know, for all – you know, I was talking – just talking about Mario and Mario coach teams and this, that, and the other. And for as much crap as Mario gets – for coaching this, that, or the other, right? I, I do think that teams take on the personality of their coach and the the biggest Mario defender or the biggest Mario hater, it doesn't really matter. There's one thing I think you could not deny about him and that's like his tenacity, his toughness, his just fiery personality. And mm -hmm. I do think teams take on the personality of their coach. Like, you know, Cam Ward, like certainly, you know, doesn't seem like a, a like a rah-rah guy. Like he's more like <laughs> cool, calm and collected. But I do think that, some of Mario's tendencies and, and personality are the reason that Miami's been able to come back. Now, having the best quarterback in the league helps too. But I do think that like part of the team is taking on that like, no, we're never out of it. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep – I mean, we don't care if we're down 25. We will just keep playing hard. And I think that's been pretty – I you know, again, you can give Mario all the crap you want for anything else. I think that's been pretty impressive. I'll get right back to chatting with Manny, but first, I do want to give some love to our friends over at BetUS. If you use our code right now, YouTube150, that's YouTube150, you get 150% sign-up bonus through BetUS on your first deposit. Your next two deposits, you get at 125% bonus. All of that up to 2K. Now, if you put more money in the first time, you're obviously going to get the biggest bonus on the biggest chunk, but make sure you're betting responsibly and betting with our friends over at BetUS. Yeah, without question. I think, you know, Mario's uh, his influence in terms of toughness, in terms of uh, being uh, 
tough up front, right? Winning those type of battles, being a team that's going to shove the other team and not take it. Uh, I think they they embody all of that. And, and that's why, I, you know, I, I said to you prior to the season when we did our preseason outlook, why I felt Miami was different. I, I go back to last year's Clemson game, uh, you know, a game that they won because Kate Klubnick made some mistakes, certainly. Uh, but they won it because they were physical up front. And that's the personality that they have taken on with Mario. Miami was not that for the last 20 years. Uh, and the reason they have a chance to win the ACC championships, besides the fact that Cam Ward is the quarterback, as you mentioned, it's because they take on the coach's personality in terms of toughness up front, winning the physical battle. And, you know, to come back from 25 points down, uh, you needed Cam Ward to be special, but you also need Cam Ward to have time. And they found that they gave him some time to throw the football and you needed the defense to force some some three and outs and, and get Cal off the field. If you've given up a ton of plays, those guys took on the coach's personality. Don't give up win the battle up front, play by play, all that kind of coach speak you want to talk about. They took it on, and that's why they were able to do it. On Cam, and then we'll talk about Louisville more specifically, but on Cam, um, last couple of weeks, more turnovers, I think four total against the the two ACC opponents. Um, is, is that something – I mean, that was the knock, right? That was the concern mm-hmm. coming in. And he certainly makes enough plays to overcome that, and probably against their schedule will probably be fine um, in most spots. But is that – I mean, is your thought for the rest of the year that that just kind of might be what you get? You might just get that Brett Favre gunslinger, like he's going to make a boneheaded player too, but then he's going to make six great plays to make up for it. Or do you think he can clean it up some? Or where where do you lie on like what his outlook looks like? Yeah, I think that's this is just the way Mario's going to let things break down. He pretty much said it uh, after the Cal game. You know, even even when he's making mistakes, you kind of got to let that guy cook and let him be him. And I think it, it helps you on two fronts. It helps you win ball games because Cam Ward is certainly capable of helping you come back from twenty five points down. I think it helps you on the recruiting front. It gets quarterbacks excited to see a head coach uh, allow that their guide to do their thing. And and let's face it, Miami struggles for the last twenty years in part not being dominant enough up front has been not recruiting the quarterback position well. And so in a lot of ways, this is an audition for future quarterbacks to, to see the way Cam Ward performs. If he can get to the Heisman ceremony at the end of the season, even better for Miami. You start to change the narrative. Let's not forget, Mario Cristobal has been branded a quarterback killer, right, by other people in the past. That's been a knock on him. Well, if Cam Ward uh, is allowed to be Cam Ward and he takes you places, that's going to get other quarterbacks excited to come play for you in the future. Sure. Louisville is a, a tough team, a team that's played Notre Dame and SMU extremely close. Um, this game on the road, coming off of a bye, just overall general thoughts on on Louisville. Yeah, it's a tough game, probably the toughest game Miami has left on, on the regular season schedule, although I think that the trip to Syracuse could be trickier because Kyle McCord has been playing well and they've got a good offense. But, uh, you know, I, I certainly think that uh, this is, this is going to be an interesting game. I really want to see the way Miami's secondary – uh, handles Ja'Cory Brooks. I want to see how much pressure Miami is able to put on Tyler Shuck. Uh, can they slow down the running game, avoid the big play? You know, this is this is a very good, well-coached uh, Louisville team who beat Miami here in South Florida a year ago uh, and really did it uh, with some excellent play calling and lots of offense. So I, I want to see the way Lance Guidry's unit sort of uh, comes back coming off of, you know, giving up uh, 38 points to Cal in, in a game that really Cal – you know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have scored that many points. Yeah. Um, defensively, it, you know, nobody has really slowed Miami at, at, at any point, maybe in a first half or two with the Virginia Tech and the Cal games. But, you know, I, I'd struggle to see how Louisville could keep, you know, without out, absent a bunch of turnovers or, you know, just kind of boneheaded mistakes. I kind of struggle to see Louisville holding, I, I don't think their defense is as good as it was last year, holding Miami under 30 points like to me that would if they hold them under 30 I think Louisville's got a really good chance to win I just don't know that they can do that yeah I'm with you I think you know Ashton Gelati is a guy that everybody sort of pegged in the preseason to have a big year for Louisville he's only got two sacks to this point Uh, I think you know while he's been able to put pressure on the quarterback hasn't been able to finish plays uh, I think if if Miami turns the ball over, you're right. I think that's what that, that's what helps Louis. But what's helped Miami to this point survive the turnovers is that they're actually forcing turnovers on their side on defense. I mean, ten picks for Miami uh, to this point, and 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 they're helping get the ball back and giving Cam Ward extra possession. So, I think uh, I think if Miami can go in there. Uh, set the tone with Mark Fletcher a little bit, running the football, let Damian Martinez get rolling, then this is a game they should win comfortably. But, uh, you know, I don't expect that to happen. Miami's not good off of bye weeks. And uh, I think Louisville's a good team at home, so I expect a close one. Yeah, Tyler Shuck has played fairly well. I think they're pretty happy with with what he's mm-hmm. done. Um, 
is is that you know that matchup of Shuck and and their weapons against Miami's DBs your biggest concern in this game? Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Uh, I think Colin Lacey coming back uh, a couple weeks ago, you saw the influence he had in the Notre Dame game, kept them within a touchdown there. Uh, they've got a couple guys that, that can make plays for them on offense. Uh, Ja'Cory Brooks, I mentioned previously. Isaac Brown is their rushing leader, a kid who's just super, super explosive. Doesn't get a ton of touches, but makes the most of it. So I think ultimately, uh, you know, this is going to be a good challenge for this Miami uh, team and if the defense shows up, if Miami's defense plays at a high level, I think this is the kind of win that can give them a lot of confidence and probably a lot of outsiders' confidence in, in where the program is and as far as where it's going towards the end of the season. Yeah, this feels like the one that if if Miami can win this one, obviously there are other tests, but if if you can go on the road and beat Louisville, it, it just seems like man, it you'd certainly get to Charlotte at that point. You know, outside of like just a complete collapse. You could even probably drop one more and and you know have a pretty good chance of getting to Charlotte. Although I guess Clemson, SMU, Pitt are all undefeated too. Um, I you know I feel like if you can get this one under your belt, does it surprise you the spread is as close it is is as it is or opened up at like three points? No, not at all. Because you know Louisville again, the two losses were close, right? They lost to Notre Dame and SMU, I think, by a touchdown. So um, I, I think you know going into the season, I had Miami as an underdog going into this game because I thought Louisville would would probably be a one loss team at this point. Um, uh, but uh, you know, does not surprise me. I think Miami can certainly win this game by more than a score. Uh, their offense is capable of that. But again, they're not good off of bye weeks. I think Miami hasn't won a, a game off of bye week since 2018 or 2017. It's been a long time. So uh, that's something that Mario Cristobal and Manny Diaz both struggled with. So we'll see if, if Miami as a team figures it out and gets off to a good start and not a slow start. So Tuesday morning, we're kind of early in the week. So I don't know if you have an official prediction yet, but do you have a lean? Do you have a feeling on how this thing goes down? Yeah, in the preseason, I had Miami losing this game. Uh, I, I feel a little differently about Louisville now, having watched them the last couple of weeks struggle. Uh, Tyler Shuck has had some turnovers the last few weeks. They barely got by Virginia, uh, couldn't score a ton of points. I think Miami wins this game by 10 points uh, and and feels pretty good about themselves uh, coming off the bye week. Yeah, I I, uh, I look at it's hard to know exactly how, how things, why things have happened the way that they did you know um but i do think miami being healthy i i don't if there's any kind of concern about them playing down to competition like uh, you know or or even just like west coast you know weirdness with cal or um virginia tech like things like that like i don't think that they would play down or overlook this kind of opponent i do think mm-hmm. that this one they'll get up for and i actually think miami wins by like 14 as well like i think they kind of I mean, maybe it's close and then they get it one late to kind of go away but I, I don't see the game, game kind of ever being in doubt. Now, at the same time, I, I didn't think Cal would be a, you know, have a 25-point lead either. So right. maybe I'm just an idiot. But um, I, I think Miami wins kind of comfortably. It, you know, Louisville could certainly make a statement. They could help their ACC chances some. But um, I, I do think that uh, Miami kind of wins going away in this one. So, Manny, where can people follow you? Where can they get more of your work? Yeah, you can read me at The Athletic and uh, follow me on the Wide Right Podcast. Follow me on Twitter at uh, Manny underscore Navarro. I guess I should call it X, but I'm, I'm so old, as you can tell by the great beard, that I still call Twitter it Twitter. Yeah, same. yeah. so, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you can follow my work there. You can check out the Wide Right uh, pod on, on YouTube as well. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you a ton, Manny. Again, appreciate BetUS for their support as well. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, brother. You too.